Okay, so now that I've figured out how to do a whole host of um, fake students with my work and personal phones and work and personal laptop, we are going to just go through some of the examples of how you can view your Zoom screen. So right now, this is the host. You're seeing the host. Now, this is my gallery view. If you imagine, um, you know, eight, nine, ten more students, twenty more students versus gallery view, it shows the person who was talking. You are probably familiar with these. Um, but this all changes when the teacher or someone, maybe a volunteer, starts sharing their screen. And so I wanted to go through what that looks like and why it can be confusing as a facilitator sometimes and how to best support your teacher and or volunteer while they're sharing their screen. So uh, to talk through it a bit. A lot of times when teachers are sharing their screens, they cannot see every student in the gallery, even if they have two screens, even if they have um, a split screen. So as a volunteer, there are ways you can adjust your gallery view while the teacher is still sharing their screen to uh, tell teachers, oh, hey, so-and-so is raising their hand, or actually, no, the student just came in and uh, they can answer a question. So I'm going to actually have Mr. Dog is not muted. Why is Mr. Dog not muted? There we go. So I'm going to use my personal laptop to share my screen. So I am Mr. Dog on my laptop. So I will actually rename him as Mr. Dog. We'll pretend he's the co-host. So Mr. Dog co-host is going to change. He's going to share his screen and teach his lesson on ESL rules. And we can look at what he sees momentarily. So we can maybe make this big so all the students ideally can see it again um, as you're working just make sure your students are you make sure your font is big enough that your students can read that as you can see here on my laptop screen this is nice and big if i was a student with a laptop if i were a student with a laptop this would be fine for me but watch what happens if i switch okay to my student with a phone view. This is my student with a phone. This is what the student with a phone is seeing. Now, I know the camera isn't great, the angle isn't great, but this is hard to read no matter who you are. Um, and so imagine two hours of this. You, can't, you can zoom in, but then you can't see anybody talking as much. So just be cognizant of how much you screen share, what you screen share, and um, whether or not students can see it. So here's the pencil for scale. Um, there we go. So as I click through this, so clicking, clicking. So this is a calendar as you can see here, no problem. But my student with a phone over here, like that's kind of hard to see the days and especially this little font that shows Mondays, Wednesdays, Sundays, so, which I know it's hard to see because you're going through like three different cameras to view what your student is viewing, but just keep in mind it's very difficult for students to see. So now let's watch what happens. So this is what students on a computer see. This is what students on a phone see. Now if the teacher starts writing, let's say I want to type in birthday. This is someone's birthday, maybe on the 27th of the month. So to me as the teacher, that looks fine. Or for anyone on a screen, on a computer screen, that looks fine. But to someone on a phone, again, that's very hard to see. So you'd have to be very close to your screen to see anything that's going on. So again, this is not the best option we give to students. Um, by, anyways, so these are different screen sharing options. Now, what I was working on was different views as a Zoom participant. 
So, to reiterate, this screen that you're seeing a recording of right now is watching the screen share from this slideshow. So I can see all of these participants here, but the person screen sharing, the teacher, cannot. So if you're the volunteer, you have the option to drag this to be much bigger so you can see all of the students. And you don't really need to see the teacher going through this slideshow because you can understand what they're narrating versus the students who cannot understand everything that the teacher may be saying might not. So if you can keep an eye on your students here and say, oh, I think Miss Cat has a question that might be helpful. So just different ways you can toggle this screen. You can also, so this is called side-by-side -side gallery. So you have screen share on one side, gallery on one side, side-by-side -side speaker on another. So you can see Mr. Dog is the speaker. He is side-by-side um, -side to his PowerPoint. You can make his PowerPoint smaller. You can make him smaller, Mr. Dog. So, or whoever is actively speaking. Now, the standard view is, sorry, there's people walking in the hallway. So this is the standard view. We will swap. So standard view of seeing the shared screen and the speaker, standard view seeing the shared screen and the participants or the gallery. Some teachers try and use this view to teach and keep an eye on their students, but as you can see, they can't see much of their PowerPoint. So that's uh, another way you can kind of lend them aid. Okay, so standard view versus if you want to see the speaker and then whatever they're talking about, you can swap it, swap it back. If you want to see all of, wow, that's too many things. Okay, so switching back. And if you want to get out of standard view, and back to the side-by-side -side panel view, you can either click here, side-by-side, -side, or you can go up to view options and do side-by-side, -side, click off, click on. So that's standard versus side-by-side -side mode. So if you followed that at all, good for you. If not, at least now you know where some of the options are to start experimenting, and hopefully this was kind of helpful. So I'm going to stop Mr. Dog from sharing. I kicked him off because he's not the host. And then I'm going to pause my video and then end the meeting. So thank you for sticking with me.